Hello everyone, and welcome to the playthrough didn't need to see of a relatively short game from what I see. Uh, it's Kansei, or however you pronounce that, the second turn, which is part two, or the sequel and or part two, whatever, of Kansei. I've never played the first one, uh, so I don't know if it relates or anything. I don't have any expectations for this. I saw it the other day, it was on sale. And it was just like a couple bucks, so I, I don't expect anything from it. I do see there's like record times of six minutes or thirty minutes. That's not likely likely to be me, because <laughs> I take more than one playthrough. But I thought for like an initial playthrough, I would just record it to see. I don't typically play a lot of smaller games like this, so it'd be interesting just to see how it works out for me. But it's been a long time since I've actually sat down to record anything. I've been a little busy. I have played a little bit of games. I've bought way more than I've played, and I don't know if that's because I haven't been able to play games, so I feel like I need to just keep adding to the backlog instead of finishing the backlog. But whatever. I mean, you can you can see my, uh, my home screen here. Uh, Shin Megami Tensei 3 Nocturne over there. I kind of got stuck. I have to find some kind of dollar bill or something. And I can't remember if I, I had just... I just got this PS5. Relatively. About a month or two. Um, and I put it on here and I don't know if I'm still playing on the PS4 or if I fully switched over to the PS5 for this one. But I have to find some kind of human money. And I got a little lost with it and I got a little frustrated. I keep getting lost in the open world. So... You know, I'll have to go back when I got a little bit more patience, because I keep walking into areas I'm guessing I'm not supposed to walk into yet. Uh, AI the Simonian Files, I actually have the next one, Nirvana, I have the Collector's Edition, which I'm not going to let myself crack open until I earn the Platinum in this, and I've only done one playthrough of this, so I might actually record a little bit, um, maybe a playthrough or two of this. Maybe when I go back to do it, it's such a beautiful and hysterical game all at the same time. And uh, Conception Plus, I was playing that for a little bit. I had logged like, I don't know, 10 hours into it or something. So that's going to be a grind. But it's one of those things you just kind of chip away at. Astro's Playroom, already 100% it, loved it. It was an absolute adorable little pre-installed game on the console. And... Uh, that was amazing. I, I loved it. I might just play that again just for fun. So I've left it on here. I didn't want to delete it because I know I could re-download it, but I just loved it so much. I was like, man, if I ever just want to chill out and do a couple of my favorite levels, it's right there. I don't think it even takes up that much space. Well, hopefully I never have a space issue because if I do, that's probably going to be the one that goes. Man Eater glitched on me. So close, I just have to beat, uh, what's his name, Scaly Pete, and I don't quite have, I didn't put in my, my nutrients to the bone armor, so I'm kind of screwed myself there, because I, I think I have like, I don't know, I think I got the teeth, and maybe the fins with the bone armor, but I don't have all the parts that are tier 5, and I was slowly chipping away at that. It really gives you carpal tunnel though, to sit there and, and chomp away all the time. And I need to just sit down and, and do the update because I have one sightseeing collectible. It's the underwater lab. It glitched on me and it's really kind of frustrating. There's just one and it's, it's at the end. I think it's at the golf. So to replay the whole game again, just for that one with, uh, I don't know, maybe I just do the sightseeing ones and do it that way and it might register. I don't know. I've heard that if you download the patch, it might fix the glitch, or it might just give you the trophy for that, because that's really the only collectible one I have. I think that was pretty much it, just for Scaly Beat there. Crash Bandicoot 4, it's about time. Yes, it is about time. I've been playing that. I've actually been recording this, just without commentary, because no one needs to hear me. Cussing away every time I die. <laughs> I think there's one part that I died like... I don't know, 50 times? It was just like a straight 15 minutes of just dying. Same spot, over and over again. But it is nice to get back in Crash Bandicoot, so I, I limit myself to just, 
you know, like a couple levels when I sit down to play it. So I don't get too frustrated and hung up on it. And then, yeah, what we're playing today, Kansei, can't say. I can't say it's Kansei. I don't know. I know it's a very long intro. But it's been a long time, so I just, I just felt like talking. I was actually going to do this one today, The Last Campfire. It looked cute, but I changed my mind at the last minute. And maybe I'll start this on the weekend or something. Let's just jump into this. Oh, right. Like, I did not realize that was a rat game. That's really short. Oh, well, it's on my trophy list now. I'm cool with that. References. I have several. Unseen text. Skip unseen text? Is that... I guess white is yes. I would think... Okay. Don't skip unseen text. Text speed, yes, I like it all the way forward. English, sound volume, toggle voices, two, four, six, eight people. Okay, this is fine. Music room, lock content. I don't think I've ever had a rat game on my, my trophy list. I, I don't want to platinum this today because I don't want to actually kick off my fastest platinum time, which is one of the Sherlock Holmes games from Frogware. And it was like 18 hours, and I legit did not put that game down. I bought it, went home, sat down, absolutely just fell in love with it, just completely enamored, could not put it down. I think I put it down for like five, six hours just to get some sleep, and then I got back up and I immediately jumped back on it. It was an amazing game. So I do not want that removed. This thing is impossible. Here I was thinking we would have uh, voice acting. Notebook. Notebook with coffee stains. A tangram isn't that hard. You're just not thinking about it right. Tangram? I don't know what a tangram is. Oh yeah, so how exactly am I supposed to think about it? I'm guessing we're the guy on the right. That doesn't look like anything from the guy from the, the uh, title page there. You need to be more flexible. Flexible. They're hard shapes, You should girl. be open to the idea that what looks like one thing might just be a small part of something completely different. I wish I had the nice math features like this. The always give you a good idea of what's inside. Mm. Oh, man, I took a drink when I was supposed to be reading. Okay, you mean like how my tiny little sister is such a huge genius? She's not that tiny. She's the same size as you. <laughs> just like that. Who on earth invented this thing anyway? It's such a weird puzzle. Well, I think that according to legend, the tangram happened when someone dropped a square tile and it broke into seven pieces. When he tried to put them back together, he discovered that he could shape it into many different things. Hmm. So basically we're having fun at the expense of some poor guy who broke his tile. Yup. Well, if it weren't for that, wouldn't the tile just be a boring tile like all the other tiles? Probably be less expensive, too. But because of what happened, it's now a famous puzzle that's been seen across the world. Is this the one where, like, the little square disappears? Is that a thing? Sometimes, tangle? in order to find a greater purpose, you have to be broken first. Oh, they went deep. Broken, huh? I think I'm happier just being a boring old tile that no one will ever notice. I'm with this guy. I mean, I realize I'm probably a little snarky today, but choosing what happens whatever. To us. It's been a long day. You don't think we get to decide our future? You can if you work hard enough. I never said that. We don't get to decide what happens to us, but we can always decide how to respond to it. You know, you sure think about a lot of deep stuff for a 14-year-old. That's what I was saying. I thought girls your age were supposed to be into cute guys or nail polish. That is sexist, homie. That's a stereotype, and you know it. Thank you. You said it nicer. What, I'm not allowed to tease you? Besides, I'm sure you'll start thinking about a boy one day, and when that day comes, you better make sure he gets my approval first. I don't want to lose my sister to some punk kid who's no good. <laughs> Stop choking! I told you, I'm not interested in that sort of thing. Yet. Don't worry. You're not going to lose me anytime soon. What happened? What happened? 
I have no idea what happened. Where am I? Was that a flashback from when they were kids? That was really creepy. I thought it crashed. I open my eyes slowly and take in my surroundings. Nice office. Coffee table, books, computer. Looks like a pretty average apartment. No apartment. Something feels off though. Good morning. Fix this all grown up? It's not an apartment, it's a prison. All thanks to me sticking my nose into a murder yesterday. I hope you slept well. Why do you care? Aki sits beside You're me on the guest, couch. After all. Except for the part where I don't want to be here. Well, there's not much I can do about that. You have to admit it's a lot nicer than police custody, though. I don't see why Detective Gursky thought it was necessary to detain me anyway. I already solved the murder yesterday. The murderer even confessed. Confessions can be recanted. It's best to have the most solid case possible in situations like this. What about Naoki? He was there. Why not use him? Just give me a pardon on any pronunciations of names. I'm sure they'll use my brother, too. But the fact remains that you're the one who solved the case. That makes you the strongest witness they have. Whatever, there's plenty of painfully obvious evidence at the scene already. You hardly need me. You'd be surprised what expensive lawyers are capable of doing. We need the most airtight case possible. Miko might seem like a relaxed guy, but he's thorough. Miko, you mean Detective Gersky? Yeah. Miko Ligerski. Seem awfully familiar with him. You think so? Her expression breaks into a wide grin. Grin. <laughs> I can only assume there's a story here that she's not telling me. Anyway, you should thank me for convincing him to let you stay with us. Thank you. Why? With us, you get a nice bed, good food, and annoying company. Aki, I got the coffee. Wait, are these the little siblings? Naki opens the door of the apartment, triumphantly holding up a cup of coffee. Where's my coffee? Coffee. Uh. Naki stumbles as he enters, grasping at the air in an attempt to catch himself. A young girl with pale skin and white hair appears from the hallway and reaches out, calmly lifting the coffee cup from his outstretched hand as he falls forward. She got her priorities. I like her little hair thing in there, the little skull. She steps to the side as Naoki goes crashing to the ground. Girl gazes placidly at Naoko on lying on the Be floor. Be careful. Oh. Ooh, nice save. Then girl nods and hands the cup of coffee to me before disappearing back into the hallway. She's on my side. She gave me the coffee. Yes. That's Lee May. Lee May. I like it. Oh shit, I skipped something. Oh, that was me. Whatever. Naoko stands and rubs his head ruefully. That's Lee May for you. Go get more coffee. She's a quiet child. Hmm, quiet child. Quiet? Who? Don't don't mince words. Anyway, there's too much going on in her head, so it's a little hard on her to maintain conversations. What? She's like a genius kid or something. Exchange glances. What Not did I say? Exactly. It's a little more complicated than that. Why don't we talk about it on the way there? Where are we going? I thought I was trapped here. Yeah, where are we going? To speak with our client, of course. It doesn't take long for us to leave Edgewater. Is that like the Seattle Needle or something? I don't know where the needle is. I gaze sleepily out the car window and struggle to sit up straight in my seat. It's still early morning and the city is only faintly outlined against the pale sky. I take a few sips of my coffee before dozing off completely. What? We went to Harvest Moon. The cityscape outside the car is transformed into a country scene. <laughs> I vaguely remember passing the big city, but I'm pretty sure I fell asleep after that. Typical. I gaze at the rolling countryside as it passes by. All I see are clusters of trees with telephone poles dotting the side of the road. Aki's driving is surprisingly sedated, considering her personality. I expected a lot more road rage. Oh, she seems pretty... pretty stable. She seems content to chug along slightly below the speed limit, even though the road is perfectly straight and no other cars are in sight. Homie, they might be, you know, about to get rid of your body. I don't... have you seen Yellowstone? They take you to the train station. 
I feel like we're creeping along at an incredibly slow pace. I guess this is why we had to leave early. At least I get to sit in the front. Glancing in the back seat, I see Noki dozing, his head resting on his chest. Oh, you're gonna have a cramp. Mima is awake, but she's staring blankly out the window. Glad you're awake. Did you enjoy your sleep? No, not particularly. The seat feels lumpy and now my neck hurts. Oh, you are a whiny little bitch. Aki laughs and shakes her head. <laughs> At least you're honest. No, he's not. you something stronger than a triple shot? That's what you gave him? Hmm. No, it's not your fault. It'll kick in soon enough. I'll kick you. I look out the window again, trying to focus on the scenery. It looks like we're far away from the city by now. Any reason we had to leave so early? We have a long way to go to meet with our client, and he's the sort of guy who will get very fussy if we're late. Hmm. Where are we going anyway? What are we supposed to be doing? Who's the client you're talking about? So many questions that you should have asked before you even got in the vehicle. Wait, you said you were going to tell me about Lee May, didn't you? Not in front of her. You're overflowing with questions. I suppose I can't blame you. You're not the only one with questions, though. In fact, you're a pretty big question mark yourself. I, I'm, yeah, I don't even know what this dude is. Let's Maybe I make a deal, first. shall we? You ask a question, then I ask a question. We'll trade answers. Do I actually get to answer, or is this not one of these choice games? I guess that works. I hope there's choices. I mean, it's some kind of mystery, so... I should be able to at least click around on clues or something. Oh, I do! Yes! What should I ask? Okay. <laughs> Who are you people? <laughs> I gotta do it. Who are you people, anyway? <laughs> you work for high-profile corporations like... Odd Team Engineering. The police seem to trust you almost unconditionally. That's some sketchy shit right there. But you just look like a bunch of kids. You look like young adults. Aki bursts out laughing. <laughs> You're a kid too, aren't you? Yeah, it looks younger than you. We're a special investigation agency. Our work isn't always as exciting as corporate espionage and murder. More often than not, we're just snapping photos of cheating lovers. As for why the police trust us, that's sort of a weird story. That's for another question, though. Okay. Okay, my turn. What's your name? I was hoping you wouldn't ask that. I mean, I would think they would know already if the cops dropped you off you at their apartment. You do realize how suspicious it makes you look when you hide it, right? Things are only as complicated as you want them to be, but I respect your privacy. Find it out later. I didn't realize I picked that. The girl who can insert thoughts into my head whenever she wants respects my privacy. Ironic. We're going to have to call you something, though. Is Kongai okay? Kongai? Okay. Roughly translated, it means strong emotions. It's sort of a play on Kansei. Kansei! I think I was saying it right. Supposed to mean we something call the to ability me. to feel other people's emotions Kansei. It's like a super sensitivity. Like an empath. Since you have a type of Kansei, we can call you Kangai. Kan Guy. Get it? Unfortunately, I do now. Yeah, it is stupid. I never claim to be good at picking names. Fair point. Try to think of something else, please. I'll see what I can do. Lean back in my seat and adjust myself, attempting to get comfortable. Is there any reason your car is so tiny? Man, you just for everything. Is that your next today. question? No, I'm just saying that there's not much space here. Lee may never complain about it. I don't think the girl knows more than three words. Yeah, well, Lee May is tiny. As a fellow tiny person, mildly offended. Oh yeah, what's the deal with her anyway? Now that's definitely a new question. Right. Ooh, my turn. Where are we going? So what's the deal with Le Li Mei? What did you have to do to get to the police to trust you? Well, that's just be confident. I, they're probably having to watch her for something. I don't care where we're going because eventually we're going to get there and I'll find out, so that's a wasted question. So what's the deal with Li Mei anyway? Earlier you said there was a lot going on in her head. All of us have a sort of Kansei like you do. We can all sense thoughts and feelings to some extent. Lee Mei's Kansei is probably the purest form of them all. Aww. 
She experiences the emotions of everyone around her. Everyone? Everyone. If you're happy, she's happy. If you're sad, she's sad. Everyone else's emotions are constantly streaming into her mind. She has to spend a lot of her energy sorting out which feelings are hers and which aren't. Turn to look at Li Mei. Her eyes are open, her body is unmoving as she stares straight out the far window. Her mind must be a mess. I wonder if she can feel my pity for her. Can she even tell that it's me, or is it all mixed up inside of her? Oh man, should I even be feeling this way? If she can sense it, it's probably really demeaning to her that I'm feeling bad for her. I don't want her to think that I think of her as a poor little kid or something. I desperately try to conjure up another emotion to squelch my current mood, but my mind is completely blank. For a brief moment, Li Mei glances at me from the corner of her eye. She nods slowly, almost imperceptibly, but I think she's trying to tell me she's okay. Alright, next question. Where are you from, anyway? Los Angeles. I'm pretty sure you wouldn't get caught on copyright if you wanted to I'd say Los Angeles. I'd rather you don't lie about it. What? Miko told me about it. I've already Yesterday you told him that you were from LA, but when he asked you about precincts, he didn't correct him. In Los Angeles, police work districts, not precincts. Is that how you spell Los Angeles? Maybe I'm not just cracked it. I'm surprised he didn't cuff you on the spot for lying to him. Well, he didn't ask for your direct address. Actually, no I'm not. Turn my gaze back to the scenery outside, unsure of how to answer. Detective Gursky knew I was lying yesterday. Of course he did, you idiot! He deals with liars all day long. Why did he let me get away with it? Did he recognize me? I don't remember him, though. I've been living in Los Angeles for the past three years. Isn't that good enough? And before that? Only one question at a time. Remember your rules. Hockey raises an eyebrow. Of course. Go ahead. Again, where are we going? Waste of question. I mean, I feel like they had to do something monumental. Maybe it was part of the first game, but I'll ask. What did you have to do to get the police to trust you? We stopped the assassination of a visiting dignitary. There you go, monumental. What? Everyone makes a big deal about it, but it was sort of a fluke. Yeah, Scooby-Doo gang. Naoki was trailing a businessman and secretary who were, uh, <clears throat> putting in extra hours at an expensive hotel. <laughs> putting in, alright. And? He saw the assassin, thought it was suspicious, and called me in. We intercepted the assassin, saved the day, and apparently that makes us trustworthy heroes. I just picture some comical thing of, like, getting the guy to fall into, like, a construction garbage chute. Because I don't think you're in a, intercepting an assassin. I keep hitting that. It's on the bottom D-pad. And I sometimes hit that just because I don't know. Seriously? Seriously. Seriously. You'll forgive me if I find that hard to believe. A story like that is ridiculous. So? You're the boy with a kansei that allows you to experience the final moments of any dead body you touch. You should be used to the ridiculous by now. I hit it again. That was me. I guess she has a point there. It still doesn't sound like a real story, though. My turn now. Aki grins. Where did you live before Los Angeles? She's getting your history, man. Somewhere I knew you were going to ask. Somehow I knew you were going to ask that. Oh, am I really that predictable? Yep. Not going to answer? Edgewater. Really? What? I used to live here in Edgewater. Here. Aki sounds surprised. Many years. I suppose that makes sense. We've only been here for two years. And what, you guys met everybody on the street when you moved in? That whole city, you just walked out and were like, hey. She glances at me out of the corner of her eye. I'm sure she wants to ask more, but for once, she doesn't press the issue. Well, I guess that was my question. Your turn. Spending all the questions. Where are we going? A small estate out in the countryside. Didn't help me at all. It belongs to one Mr. William Otten. Of Otten Engineering? <laughs> I knew you were going to say that. Got it in one. So he's the guy who hired you to track Sarah Blackmore because she was stealing information from him. Yep. Random name. Well, bro. until she was murdered, that is. Oh. Yeah, there is that. We reported to him yesterday about what happened. 
mean about how Miss Bergstrom hired Sarah to steal from him? That and the fact that Miss Bergstrom claimed the third party was also interested in the information. I did it. I did it again. I'll stop doing it eventually. He didn't sound too happy about that, so he ordered us to come see him today and give a full report in person. Okay. Wow, that's a little demanding. I can't blame him. His entire company is at stake here. I hope you don't mind coming with us. Since you were there yesterday, it seems only natural to bring you along. Yeah, I get it. I'm sure the real reason she's taking me along is because she promised Detective Gursky that she'd keep an eye on me. But I guess I don't mind talking to this hot guy. It's not like I had any plans for today anyway. It might be interesting to see the house of a millionaire. Why does Mr. Otten live so far out of the way anyway? Considering that his company is in the middle of Edgewater, wouldn't it make more sense not to live in a gazillion miles from the place? He probably has a helicopter. Who knows? Word is that he really hates the city. His assistant said that he rarely leaves his house, conducting most meetings via satellite. Weird. His entire company is built on cutting-edge technology, but he doesn't want to live around a couple of stoplights. Hockey shrugs. Rich people are eccentric. Comes with a job description, I think. Sounds more like paranoia to me. Maybe it is. You missed it. I jump a little as Lime speaks up from the back seat. She'd been silent for so long I almost forgot she was there. She's giving me the... Oh, I don't remember her name, but she was in Darker Than Black. An old anime. She kind of gives me vibes of that. Girl. Lime is pointing at a small side road that we just passed. Oops! I think we're just a little tight spin and the car tires screech as the car spins in the road. What? Ow! Naki jerks awake as his head bumps against the window he was using for a headrest. Sorry, missed a turn. He ropes his head slowly. Yeah, I noticed. I guess we're almost there? Yep, just a few minutes now. Anyway, what were we talking about? Right, Mr. Otten. He's one of those self-made men you hear about all the time, built Otten Engineering himself from the ground up. But he's also ridiculously secretive. No interviews, hardly any TV appearances. His assistant, Sophia Millerson, does most of that. The car slows to a stop as we approach Mr. Otten's house. I squint out the window to get a better look at it. It looks like a very expensive, very pretty box. Ah, a modern home. That is a pretty box. Kind of small for a rich guy, though. This is this it? This is it! This is it! But it looks like someone just glued some fancy doors and windows onto a huge box. I kind of like- is that like a two-way mirror? Yeah, it kind of does. I guess since he always stays inside, he doesn't care what it looks like on the outside. Aki kicks open the door, car door and leaps out. The front doors of the house swing open silently and a strict-looking woman approaches us. Are you the representatives from the agency? No, oh, we're Pizza Hut. Yep, I'm Aki Mizutani. You must be Sophia Millerson. We spoke on the phone. Aki thrusts her hand out, but the woman merely raises a skeptical eyebrow. How come she be a sedative driver, and then you add all these, like, adjectives of, like, thrust and kick and all this other crap to her? You're not exactly what I pictured. That's stereotypical. Looking at Aki's wrinkled shirt and dusty pants, I can see why she might be a little thrown off. Being a private investigator involves having an appearance that doesn't stand out, ma'am. Truly. The woman places her hands on her hips and sighs reluctantly. Well, come in. Mr. Otten seems unusually eager to speak with you. Disapproving voice much? Aki kicks the car door shut and motions for us to follow her. I climb out and stumble for a moment as my knees buckle underneath my weight. My legs are cramped from sitting in that car for so long. Sophia watches me impassively. She doesn't look impressed. Naki comes stumbling out of the car after me, and we both do our best not to look like a pair of goldfish who have been dumped unceremoniously out of our bowl. Are these your associates? Nah, there's her snot no siblings. If she was unimpressed before, she's plain worried now. I can't say I blame her. They are. Naki steps to the side, and Noki and Lime approach Sophia. This is Sophia. Lime, and this is my brother Naoki. Lime glides up to Sophia like a swan and offers her a polite bow. And he is? Sophia points at me. Aki stares at me and a hint of panic shows in her eyes. I've already made it clear that I don't intend to give my name away, but I guess that puts her in a somewhat difficult position. That would be... Kongai. <laughs> now you're straight up lying. What? 
Kangai. She's really going to stick with that weird name. Kangai? Unusual. I said that too. I turn to Aki and make a face, but Sophia either doesn't notice or care. Aki shrugs apologetically. Sorry, it's the best I could do on short notice. You should have given me something to work with. I'm suddenly regretting not telling her my name was Fred or something. I guess it's better than nothing. As we follow Sophia into the house, I see a brief flash of red light. Is there a pause menu? There is! Perfect. Because I am... Now it's got like a freaking cursor. I need to do more point and click games. I... That was really quick. Wow. I don't uh, do a lot of them. But I'm going to break this off for part one right now. I am going to keep playing myself and I'm just going to break it into part two. But I like to keep it in 30 minute chunks. It's easier for me to manage. So on to part two.